Welcome back 3DSSPP users. I'm Kelly with the University of Michigan Center for Ergonomics, and I am continuing to share with you some information and insights about the 3DSSPP software developed at the University of Michigan. In this video, I am going to be demonstrating the 3DSSPP's animation capabilities. Starting from a new project, I'll direct your attention to the bottom section of the main 3DSSPP interface where you'll see the animation bar. Looking at this large section of the animation bar, which will be our timeline, you'll see two rows of numbers. The top row denotes seconds, and the bottom denotes individual frames. Notice that each block represents one frame, and that 25 frames make up one second by default. Before I start animating, it's important to set anthropometry. Note that when animating while using the 3D SSPP, you can have different hand loads, postures, and support selections for each frame but your anthropometry must remain the same. I'll keep a 50th percentile male, which is the default, and select Apply. The 3D SSPP always initializes with one default frame at frame zero. To add an additional posture, you will select a frame where you'd like to add a posture and click the button on the right side of the animation window that's labeled Insert Frame. This new frame will duplicate the posture of the currently displayed frame, but you can see that I now have two frames showing up on our animation timeline. I can create a frame anywhere I'd like along the timeline. These frames can be created simply to house multiple postures within one file, or you can create an animation from these postures. Note here that if I want to remove any selected frame, I can simply click the button labeled Remove Frame over on the right hand side of the animation window. There are additional ways to add and remove frames, including the use of the edit menu at the top of the screen, where you can see that there are options to cut, copy, and paste frames. A word of caution, do not try to delete all of the frames of postures along the animation bar or the program will likely crash. Now let's actually create an animation. For the animation function to work, we'll want to change our avatar's posture from one frame to the next. I'll change him to have his arms raised slightly like he's picking something up from off the ground, and I will stand him up straighter as well in order to show a change in the way the avatar is positioned. However, I am going to need some frames in between these two posture frames that I've just created. Otherwise, the animation would not be much of an animation. To do that, I'm going to select the first frame of the two I've created, and I'll go up to the top animation dropdown and select Predict Reach Motion. The Predict Reach Motion menu will appear, and I will select Interpolation in the top left hand of this menu. In this section of the Predict Reach Motion menu, you'll see three posture windows. The first is the posture of the current selected frame, and the third window is the posture in the frame right after the selected frame. The middle window is a predicted view that corresponds to frames in between the current selected frame and the frame after the current selected frame in your animation. If you press the play button underneath the middle window, you can see how the 3D SSPP is predicting the changes between the initial and final posture before you finalize the animation in this menu. This version simply uses linear interpolation between the first and final frame. More realistic human motion is planned for future versions. Below those views, you can see the initial posture and final posture frame numbers. You can see that right now my initial posture is at frame 0, and my final posture is at frame 1. Before that, you'll see a section called Motion Length, and this is where I'm going to change how long the transition between these two postures is going to take. Right now it is set at 1 second long at a frame rate of 25 frames per second, but I'll change that to 12 frames, which is speeding up the animation to just under half a second. If I'm happy with that animation, I'll simply hit OK, and you can see our animation is applied to the bottom animation window. My two green posture frames are still there. These are called keyframes in the animation world, only now they're separated by half a second of interpolated frames that the 3D SSPP has generated for me. These interpolated frames are pink when they're not selected, and you can click someplace on the timeline to unselect them to see that coloring. It's important to note that you can do this as many times as you'd like over the course of the timeline. You can continue to add in key posture frames that illustrate the rest of the motions of the task and add interpolated frames in between those until you have animated a full job task sequence, or at least a portion of the full job. If I undo the interpolation that I just applied, I can now show you a shortcut version of doing the same task. Starting with two key frames that we want to use to create an animation from, when I bring my mouse right in between those two key frames, you'll see that a double arrow indicator appears. This is essentially a shortcut to add time or linear interpolation between frames, and there are two ways that you can use it. 
First, when the double arrow indicator appears, simply drag the double arrow to add as many interpolated frames as you want. When I use this method, the pink interpolation frames are automatically inserted. The second method you can use to add interpolation frames is to use a pop-up menu. Simply click once the double arrow indicator has appeared, and you'll see a pop-up menu appear. From here you can type in the number of frames or seconds you'd like in between these two frames. When I hit insert, the amount of time I've entered should be added between the two existing keyframes. This method doesn't currently work, but will be fixed in a future release. Now that we have an animation set up in our timeline, let's go over some of the features on the left side of the animation bar. Looking at our playback icons, I'll go from left to right. First you'll notice this furthest left icon is going to take you to the first frame of your animation. The second from the left icon is going to be your previous frame button. This button will simply move your timeline indicator back one frame. Next up is the reverse play icon, which when pressed will play your animation backwards. Directly in the middle is the pause button, which is situated just to the left of the play button. To the right of the play button is the next frame button. Similar to the previous frame button, this button will move your timeline indicator one frame forward. Last in this section of icons is the last frame button. This button will take your timeline indicator to the last frame in your animation. If you look below these icons, you'll notice a section with a slider titled Playback Speed. This section is going to control how quickly your animation plays. To the left, your animation will play slower, and to the right, your animation will play more quickly. And this is confined by the maximum speed of the computer. If you don't want to manually slide the speed indicator to the normal playback speed position, there is this handy normal checkbox that will automatically take your playback speed back to the normal speed when checked. If you'd like to export your animation for viewing outside of 3ds SPP, navigate up to the animation drop-down menu and select export AVI file. The animation export pop-up menu will appear and you can see that your selections in this menu are your various avatar view windows. I'll choose the hominoid view because that's where we've been mainly working and hit OK. From here, you will choose the file location where you'd like your animation to export and hit OK to begin the export. It's important to note that 3D SSPP exports animations at 25 frames per second, and when playing back through video players, you may see videos conformed to a different frame rate. That's all for this first tutorial on developing animation videos when using the 3D SSPP. Check out the second animation video covering some more in-depth animation techniques if you'd like to learn more about these capabilities. Thanks for watching!